DNA has been solving cases for quite some time. Something as simple as tossing a cigarette onto the sidewalk can lead to a life sentence. The filter on a cigarette acts like a sponge that soaks up human saliva, which contains DNA. The DNA in the filter can last up to six months, especially if left indoors. For 57-year-old Daniel Wells, a cigarette with his DNA is what brought him into this interrogation room. I'm sure you got a hundred questions right now. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I, this is, um... Um, we have a lot of things that we'd like to talk to you about. Also, uh, we got a bunch going on. We got a lot of questions to ask you. Um, part of the procedures we need to go through is, uh, before we go any farther, I need to read you your rights. Does not mean that you're under arrest. It does not mean that you don't walk out of here. It just means right now, we need to talk about what's going on with this case. Understand that? Sure. Okay. No questions about it? Okay. So I'll read, each, I'll read all these to you. Okay. If you don't understand anything, you have any questions, please feel free to stop me, okay? okay. Back in the year 1985, 23-year-old Tanya McKinley was murdered in Pensacola, Florida in the early morning hours of New Year's Day. When her body was found, the police were able to collect samples of DNA left inside her body. The only problem they had was that they didn't have the technology they have today, so the case remained unsolved for almost 40 years. So, back in the mid-80s, did you know a girl named Tanya McKinley? Tanya McKinley, no. Who was on Milton High School? Tanya McKinley? I knew a Tanya, um... Or Tanya Etheridge? No. Do you remember her if you knew her? I mean, it looked like if it was somebody you dated in high school. No, I know. You'd remember that, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, only Tanya, it was Tanya Lynn. That was the school with. Yeah. Or she probably would have done like a year ahead of you in school. I don't know. The name doesn't ring a bell. No. Mm -hmm. no. Well, I mean, that's kind of who we were talking about. And it's going to be kind of strange if. You don't know her at all. No, I don't. I, I don't know her at all. By Daniel admitting that he doesn't know the victim, it strengthens their case against him. Because how did his DNA get into her body? If Daniel would have said, yes, I knew her and we had intercourse, that could explain the DNA evidence. Daniel claims that except for a traffic violation, he has never been in trouble with the police. The detectives know this isn't true. In fact, Daniel has assault and battery on his record. And he also has a history of interactions with prostitutes. Um, anything to do with any prostitution? Mm -hmm. Solicit a prostitute? You have to know if I'm asking a question. Yeah, like that. No, no, I'm just, I'm thinking. Um, I think you remember if you got arrested for soliciting prostitution. Yeah, I got pulled over one time in Brownsville, but I didn't get, uh, I wasn't. I wasn't soliciting prostitute. I don't know what they they pulled me over for, and then they went through my vehicle. But you got you got a charge for solicitation. Um, I don't remember. I don't think I did. I don't go, we, we just we talked out there on the street and stuff, and it was. Didn't get a ticket, a notice to appear. Didn't get taken to jail. I don't think so. Well, would you be surprised to say when I ran your criminal history it showed up both those charges? That you're arrested for battery? I'm just trying to remember. Battery? Yeah. And that you're arrested for, for battery. And arrested for solicitation? Mm -hmm. Told nothing at all. I, yeah. I remember talking just, yeah. But I didn't, I mean, I didn't get, I don't think, I don't think I got arrested. I don't know. Well, it's a good thing. So, I mean, you know, I mean, you're, you're, like me, you're older, you're experienced. Mm -hmm. You got a lot of life experience and stuff. So, you know, no, we're not here because of today. Right. There's been a lot of work leading up to today. Um, and, and I ask you questions because I'm giving you opportunities to clear some things up. Um, and I'll ask you questions that I already know the answer to. But it's better if the answers come from you. And so it gives you that opportunity to explain it. So just kind of keep that in mind, okay? that there, there's been a whole lot of work going on, a whole lot of knowledge. You don't remember ever being in handcuffs at all? Yeah. Can yeah. you tell us about those times when you have been, like, detained and arrested in handcuffs? I guess that was 
the time in Brownsville. Okay. You guess it was? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then what happened to you when they put you in handcuffs? Uh, just, I just we went downtown and, um, I can't remember. They take North a picture, store. book you, finger pressure, yeah. that stuff. So they, they did arrest you. Yeah. So, I mean, arrest is one of those things that where there's certain things in your life that cause trauma. Everybody's wired right. the same way. If you're arrested, people, unless you've been arrested so many times where you just can't remember the volume, you know that people will remember those things right. because it's not a normal, right. you know, everyday occurrence. So, I mean, these are things that, that you would know. So, you do remember that now? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Any other times that you've been... I, thought, I didn't, yeah. You know. Do you remember anything about the fight or a fight that you no, had? I don't remember about ever being in a, having a battery charge. Okay. Any other charges that you can think of? The other times that you were put in handcuffs or anything like that. The detectives make a good point that he should be able to remember such a traumatic situation. Daniel realizes the detectives have done their homework and he begins to confess to the other times he was arrested. Daniel has quite the criminal history, everything from assault and battery to exposing himself in public. And yet, so like the answers that we're looking for, we already yeah. kind of know the answers. Right. We've already said that we, we did run your history. Mm -hmm. So, was there something that you had in? Kansas City? Yeah. Where you may have been arrested there? Do you remember that? Yeah, we was that uh, It was, uh, um, the lead, the lead was Sidious Act, I think. Yeah. Do you think? Or yeah, it was. Mm -hmm. Was it just once? Yeah. Yeah, once or once. There, and, uh, I think in, uh, in Liberty one time, Liberty, Missouri. Myself. What was going on in your life then? Like, yeah, that's about that on hard times to divorce. And just, Is that why you're going through the divorce? No, it wasn't because of, it was just I don't know that I I uh, maybe drinking and stuff too had, had played a role in it. I'm sure. Did you have a drink back then? Uh, off and on. Off and on. So what happened during that incident? I just, uh, I went to court over it and just, I went and did counseling for um, about six months and uh, that was that and uh, probation for a year. Well, so, I mean, what the incident, so whenever you were, whatever you're doing, we're exposing yourself. Well, why? What, what, what yeah, was going I was, well, I was, I was coming back from a friend's house I was working on and this woman did walk up on me. I was I was peeing off the side of the off the side of my truck on a dumpster or whatever. And uh, that was and uh, anyway but she made a comment to me about it and I was had been drinking and stuff and I said something rude to her. So that went and escalated from that. Well, what do you mean? Escalated because a little lascivious type thing is you I was she I was exposed. What were these other incidents like? And the other incident was uh, I uh, exposed myself to a lady in a parking lot. Yeah, after I had been, after been drinking, yeah. That one, that one wasn't. That was. That, 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 that was. Yeah, that was. Uh, I just exposed myself. Why would you do that? I don't know. I don't know. So what about the other cases? That's the two. In Missouri. Not just the two that you got arrested for, because there's other cases. I don't. But I mean, so so you say so I know you got arrested, right? Right. And so when we're asking these questions, it's not always just what you got caught for. Right. Right. Because when we contacted them, and the report specifically state, you know, this sounds like the same suspect in these other cases, and there's like five. And now those victims chose, as many do, not they didn't want to go through the court process and they didn't want to, have to testify and stuff like that. But there's reports, right? That you've done this more than that one. when I was in Missouri. Yeah. While you were in Missouri, right. you, yeah. you did it multiple times. Yeah. Independent. When, when was that? That was in the nineties, uh, probably ninety, ninety-two, through like I don't know, ninety-five or something. 
By not admitting to all the different charges he has acquired over the years, Daniel shows the detectives that he is untrustworthy and capable of lying. This means that his claims of not knowing the victim could be false, because if he's able to lie about indecent exposure, he will definitely lie about murder. I, I don't know why. Again, Dan, I, I just can't stress you know, the, the importance of you know, where we're at now um, at the end, end of this investigation, that it's important for you to be as truthful as you can. I understand that you're, right. you're trying and that you're trying to, to be truthful and try to remember stuff. But it seems like on some of this stuff already, we're, we're, we're having a spoon feed you stuff. You're like, oh, yeah, okay, now that you, you're telling me you know about it, then I'll go ahead and tell you the truth. Right. Well, yeah. I mean, I, I, know, I know you, you know. And that's... It's just, it's, it's embarrassing. Oh, Dan, there's nothing that you can you know. say that's going to embarrass us. Well, it so, embarrasses me. I've been here. I'm, I'm, you're talking, right. I have said it embarrasses me, right? I've been doing this 30 years. He's somewhere around 27 years now doing this. A lot of our career has been spent up here in investigations. Um, we, we have investigated the worst of the worst crimes that Pensacola has, has brought to us. So, like he said, you're not going to surprise us with anything. Okay? I understand your point of view that it's embarrassing to say that, I, you know, I did these things. Um, but, unfortunately, you're not in a spot right now where you're going to be able to hide behind that embarrassment. Right. Okay, it's, it's time for all that stuff to end. It's time to come clean and, and just be honest. Okay, because that's going to get you through all this. All right. Okay, it's just honesty. From, from our point of view, what you did is you pulled up, you saw a lady, probably pretty, mm-hmm. right? You targeted her. I've been, you, I've been drinking. You've been drinking, right? That's the only, that's the only time I ever did that. And then, so you, you said you asked for direction to lure her over to your truck. Why would you do that? I understand you were drinking. I don't mean, is I it, don't know. Is it out of frustration? Did you do you think that seeing her reaction or, or her embarrassment or something yeah. like that was something that you were looking yeah, for? I just think it was just for my own gratification. Just I don't I don't know. It's just Did you use that story every time? Or is it or did you use no, different stories? That was that was just Again, that was the one that you got arrested on. Mm-hmm. But there was other cases. Right. Is it independence? Near yeah, independence. Yeah. In Blue Springs, you mentioned. I used to live in Blue Springs. Mm-hmm. But oh, you mentioned one of those. Ha- is it the Blue Springs yeah. or Liberty when you said you were by the dumpster? Uh, that was it. Was outside of Liberty, and that was up in Excelsior Springs. Okay. Is it that Liberty County or is it Liberty City? Liberty City. Okay. Now that they have shown Daniel that he is capable of committing strange and illegal acts, they want to discuss what he was doing on the night Tanya was murdered. So on New Year's Eve, going from 1984 to 1985, remember what you're doing that night? No. What would you normally have done on the New Year's Eve during that time frame? Um, maybe go out to Kevin's and apply or something like that on the beach. Or mm-hmm. Like to go out to the beach? To go. Is that where you normally hang out at? What bars? I mean, you work for Chance. Right. But you, you did culinary. Would you ever go to the bars? Mm, not very often. Like Gregory or on Davis? Downtown. Um, if you went out, you would go to use it at the beach. Yeah, that's where I'd be. When you stayed in town, where would you go? When I stayed in town. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if you didn't go to the beach, was there a bar or place in town uh, you'd like um, to go to? Um, Never got a chance. Um, what's that? Chance. Chance? Yeah. You were going to that bar since you worked for him. Well, oh, that was, the, yeah, that was over on uh, at the, uh, the University Mall. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, uh... I was just asking, would you go there? Yeah. The well, we got to work, you know, we'd go by and have, a, have after work. There was Chan's there. Chan's and, um, and then, uh, I'm trying to think what that disco was. Up there by University Mall? No. Or are you talking about Odyssey or 2001? Or that was, 2001, that's what it was. It was sort of like a Fairfield. That was a town and country. Yeah, town and country place. That's about it. That and usually I was out at, usually at the beach or. Uh, there's the Chance. Out. There's like three bars around, bar restaurants. Yeah, there, there, was Chance, Mall, Chance. there was the, was it, there was the White Hotel and Daryl's. Daryl's Bar and Grill was the last place that Tanya had been seen before her body was discovered not too far away. So what would you normally do like on a New Year's Eve night? 
what would you picture yourself back then doing as a thing? Um, Hanging out with friends, yeah, going to someone's house, going out. A group of people, yeah. I was never alive. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Daniel makes sure to say that he never partied alone, especially on New Year's Eve. The detectives need to find out how likely it would have been for Daniel to have sex with any female strangers around that time. If Daniel claims that it wasn't likely, then he will appear more guilty. When you would go out around New Year's Eve, because yeah. you're a young guy, mm-hmm. would you be out like looking for, for anybody, like company, a woman, or anything like that? No. I mean, usually I was with a group of friends. Never, or whatever. Ever get lucky? Yeah, I get lucky. Mm-hmm. Oh, man. You, you, yeah, back in those days. You could, uh, well, yeah. Yeah, but I was usually out, like, like chain, you know, out of... Um, were you versus like one night stands? Occasionally, yeah. It's it's not normally, you meet somebody and you know get to know them. And, yeah. well, most guys are not the yeah. person. If you know you're at a bar and, and you have a conversation with a girl and right. she's willing, you're not going to turn it down. Right. Yeah. Um, girls right. might, but guys usually don't. And so. Yeah, I had a few one night stands. Mm-hmm. For over an hour. Daniel has answered questions, but not once has he asked why he's being questioned or what the questions are about. They will now present Daniel with a picture of the victim and tell him why he's being questioned. I mean, this was she would look like if she'd gone out. Yeah, I don't know her. Don't know her at all? No, I've never seen her. Never. Any idea what we're talking about yet? No, I don't. Chase. So that young lady that showed you a picture of. Right. New Year's Eve, 1984, going 1985. Okay. January 1st, early morning, 1985. Okay. Was found dead on the side of a road. And I have the evidence that you're the one that's there. Oh. I have irrefutable evidence that you're there. I'm not. I'm not doing all this right. on a guess. I I'm not doing all this. No, I don't. No. On, on a hunch. Damn. Yeah. I'm telling you, you were there. I wasn't there. Do you watch TV? Some? Yeah. Watch any kind of crime shows or just news stories about crime or stuff like that? Cold case files, anything like that? No. Do you know about DNA? Yeah. DNA is actually just a positive, but more about more positive fingerprints. Right. So I can prove to literally one in 700 billion chances you were there. That's where we're at. I'm not asking. Right. Okay. We're not asking you if you're there. Honestly. I don't, I mean, I, it doesn't, I mean, it yeah, it's been, been a one night years. Yeah. It's been 35 years. This is the first time you've probably talked to the police about this. I'm sure of that. Yeah. Right? Have you noticed anything unusual for the last couple of weeks? No. Nobody around you looks unusual, seen a bunch of police cars for no reason? Nothing no. like that. Felt like somebody was following you? No. No. Well, we have been. The thing is, is that your DNA is at this site, right? On this person. It is, it is nobody else's except yours. There, there's, there's no other explanation, right? It can't be a possibility of somebody else's DNA. Your DNA is at this scene. Dan, I, I get this is this is your life. This is probably freaking you out a little bit. I just right, but, but listen to me. There's there's a story here, right? And either you can choose to give that story about what happened, the chain of events that led to what ultimately happened as to why we're here. And you have a part to play in that. If you don't, it starts to look pretty bad as to why you're not explaining it. I don't Do you understand. understand what I'm I mean, I would never I didn't have never hurt anybody in my life. That's what's, I mean, it, I, I've had one night stands and stuff before, but it's, it's like, 
Have you had a one-night stand with her before? No, I don't know her. I'm telling you, I do not. Can I recognize her? I don't know the name. Dan, it's like you went back to, to school days. The I don't only know reason you're not telling us that you know who she is is because you're afraid that somehow we'll find out that you're responsible for her death. We already know that you are. There's no way, man. Just listen, right? This has been 35 years ago, right? This has been 35 years that you haven't had to face this, right? And, and all of a sudden, one day, you're at work. You, you run your work day. Everything's fine. You're on your way home. All of a sudden, you get pulled over an hour later in this room, and we're telling you this. It's a shock. And totally normal human behavior to be defensive about. Nobody wants to admit. Much like you sat there for a while and didn't want to admit that you had exposed yourself. We had to go through this whole process where you're like, nope, nope. Oh, well, yeah. Well, I did a little bit while I was peeing. And she said something, then I said something. Then that was it. Oh, wait, no, there was another time. We went through that whole process with you, right? Right. We started it over again. But we're going to end up in the same place. Because we're not here by accident. I, I'm, I'm being honest with you. I don't really like playing games. Right? We've been doing this way too long. And, and I'm going to give you the information that you deserve to have, right? So that you can make the right decision and, and tell your side of the story. Because I'm telling you, saying that you weren't there does not work. I can prove you were there. The, the question, the unknown is how it happened. What precipitated it? What were all the dynamics going on that led to that end result? I, you, I can't answer that. You not being there, it's not an acceptable answer because the evidence, the DNA, proves you were there without a doubt. This this is going to make your world spin, right? You know, I just and, it, it just blows me away that I mean I don't. I don't, also, I don't understand. I'm, I'm really confused. Uh, well, well, I'm a little bit confused too. Um, no, I mean I don't know her, and I mean I, I, I've, I've never heard anybody. I can believe you don't know her. Maybe you didn't know her beforehand. But I don't you understand why I know her happened unless you knew her that night. You knew very her. well. I don't. I, I don't know. That's what I'm saying. I don't. So, I don't. I'll, I'll paint a little bit of this picture for you here. Okay. I mean, I've been. So I've asked you about Elmcrest. Right. Right. Okay. And so you're like, I, 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 don't, I don't know why. The address is. I don't know why I said Elmcrest. I don't. I have no idea. I've got this totally. There's a blank hole here where I don't understand why in 1985 I would have told the police that I lived on Elmcrest. I have no idea. That's what you've been saying. The problem is Elmcrest. It's like a half a mile away from where this happened. I don't consider that a coincidence. No. So now you don't remember living half a mile away or giving an address a half a mile away from where this happened. And now, even though I am telling you, just like I told you, you, you told the police down there you, you lived on Elmcrest. Oh. And now I'm telling you the DNA proves that you were there and you're just, I, I don't remember. I, I don't know. And that's really not going to work for you because it was the scene the evidence we have at the scene paints a very ugly picture this was not gentle this was not an accident and, and if you're going to let the evidence tell a story it paints a very ugly picture your opportunity is to soften that because we understand there are other dynamics to go on. We're open to the fact because we've heard it time and time again. We don't go into anything with a closed mind because there's been too many times we go in thinking one thing and we walk out thinking something totally different because then we hear the other side of the story. That's how we operate from experience. 
Well, I'm going to be honest with you, right? That's all I can do with you. My profession forces me to be honest. So I can be honest with right. you. But the evidence tells me you were there. What it doesn't say is how everything happened. And then there's also the concern that there's other things going on. Just like you're like, well, there's one incident where I was like, oh, no, wait, there's one other incident where, yeah, I didn't ask me. Oh, wait, there's another incident where I'm asking. There's that concern also. Right. But we all have to work with each other. We're here to work with you. Okay? It's all about, this is, this is your side of the story. This is all about you yeah. and, and getting this out. But I can't put words in your mouth. I can't tell you what to say. You're the only one that can do that. Yeah, but I didn't take anybody. So on New Year's Eve, 1984 to 1985. I don't remember. Explain to me then, Dan, explain to me how your DNA and so with this girl. I have unless unless it was I had sex with her or something. I don't know. A one night stand or something like that. But but after that I don't, you know, have any rec recollection of anything. Why would I mean, you I'm, not have it? I mean you lived in the area during this time, right? I, I guess I did. I don't know. I, I mean you know, lived in the area. Right. Right. This was a pretty big deal back then. Didn't I was on, it's on the news. I don't remember it. So how? I mean, I just, I'm, I'm just. How can your DNA I, end up with her? Unless we had sex, that's the only reason. That's, I don't I mean, know. I'm not asking unless. I'm, I'm not asking you to theorize. I'm asking right. you to tell me because you were there. How did your DNA end and up with this her? Girl? I was with her, I guess. Uh, I, was, yeah, I was with her. I guess, and I don't. I'm not trying to. But I don't remember her. I don't remember the name. The face means I don't remember her. Yeah. But if you're drinking was, and out partying or something like that, I mean, it happened pretty regularly. So, would you think, like we talked about earlier, that there's after 35 years, there's lots of things that are kind of vague in memories, except for the specific life events, you know? like in 1986, right? 1985, excuse me, when the space shuttle blew up. I know exactly where I was standing when I heard. Because that's a significant event in my life, right? right? So you got significant events in your life that you remember exactly where you were, right? What you were doing when they happened. Don't you think that if you had sex with a girl, you were out partying New Year's Eve, you met a girl, you picked her up, you were in the car, right? You had sex with her, and then the next morning on the news, you find out she's dead. You'd remember that. I would, yeah. Yeah, I would remember it. So that's the most. But I mean, I don't know. It's like I don't know. That's the most innocent scenario I can give you. Right. Daniel continues digging his own grave by claiming that he had never met Tanya in his life. If Daniel were now to change his story and say, "Actually, yes, I did sleep with Tanya," he would appear even more guilty. I don't know. It's, it's... Do you think there was a time that you were? I mean, back then, were you drinking so much that? You no, have I don't remember. I don't forget. I mean, I've right. got a good memory. Right. So you remember if you had sex with a girl the next day, she was on a newspaper day. If Even I, if you didn't yeah. know who she was. You'd remember the next day when they put her picture in the paper two days later. Oh, my God. I was just having sex with her two nights ago in New Year's Eve. I guess I would remember if I'd, I'd seen it. I'm just, I'm just trying to throw out some logical stuff right. there. Dana, I'm trying to help you out here. Because I'm telling you. The picture that this evidence paints is not one that you want to go out there without an explanation. There's room there to mitigate some of that evidence, right? There's a room there to make it look better than it looks right now. I, it looks horrible. But I can't fill in the blanks for you. Right. I wasn't there. I was a junior in high school. And I was in Key West, Florida. I wasn't even here. So I can't fill in those blanks. 
You're the only one. But you're the only one that can say it, Dan. I can't. I mean, I would. I'm right back where I was. To say I don't. I don't recognize her. I don't remember being with anybody on that on the evening of uh, was it New Year's? You said. I don't. I don't know. But it, it very well could have happened. You know, I could have been with her and had sex or something. But I was with several friends. We would, we would go out and stuff like that, you know. I, I mean, there'd be a group of us. Mm -hmm. But I mean, sometimes we'd be. I mean, I can remember being at the beach and stuff, and you'd just go in the parking lot and you'd have sex, mm -hmm. and then you'd go back in the bar. And two or three hours later, you'd go home or something, you know. Universal so, Home Park a lot. A lot of people used to use that park a lot because it's a huge parking lot, <laughs> lots of dark corners. Right. You ever use that place to have sex? No. Never had sex there. Not in the parking lot, no. But at the beach, you would. Uh, actually in the parking lot, but on the beach. On the beach. Yeah. The detectives tell Daniel that if he doesn't explain why he was with Tanya, he will look like a monster and it will be worse for him in the end. Daniel decides to admit that not only did he know Tanya, he was with her the night she was murdered. Um, we're not feeling that with you. I'm not a monster. But you don't yeah, want to control us. Yeah, but it's, you no. control the narrative on this. Yeah. I was, I was with her stuff but I didn't give her a ride home and there was a group of us oh God. because I guess she lived over in uh, San Rosa County or something but um, Bobby Hicks and uh, a guy named Ralph James they were with me there was a group of people I went to school with that were that were there, and uh, we did have sex in the parking lot. And other than that, well, no, actually, it was at the house, I guess. To yeah, that's where that's where um, uh, John Pendergast lived. Is that the house on Elmcrest? I guess, yeah, that must have been Elmcrest. So That's the address I don't recall. But I would stay with him every now and then. Was he out with you that night? Uh, no. He wasn't. Those were the guys there. They were. And he came by the house. And, uh, but they left with her. Tell us what happened. I just, I had sex with her. Where'd you meet her? Uh, I guess I met her at, at one of those bars. I don't know, remember the name of the bar, but it was a... Where? Right at um, University Mall. I don't know. So was it Chance? Like, I wasn't at Chance, no. I can't remember. It was, it was some, it was one of those bars. It wasn't Chance. Was it a restaurant? I can't recall if it was a restaurant and a bar. Damn. Yeah. So... Be very careful, okay? Because, like we said before, you're, you're trying to do, you're minimizing, and I understand that you're doing a lot of, I guesses. I, I think, when in reality, you know, mm -hmm. right? Right. I can already tell by the way you're acting that you almost feel relieved that you're telling some of the stuff because it's been bothering you. We hit that. 35 years you've been waiting for this day, and it's here now. Right. And it's hard. But you're going to get it off your chest. But you got to do it the right way. Which is, you remember the details. Yeah. So just tell us what happened. Tell us the details of what happened. And then we'll work through you with it. Uh, it's, it's been a while. Um, well, she just, I remember that she, her friends had left her. And she wanted a ride home. And, you know, but we went by my by my house and we had a few drinks and stuff and it just it just escalated from 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 that she uh, um, I just
Daniel finally admits that while Tanya was at his house, he attacked her and she would die from blunt force trauma to the head. Now that they have his confession, they need to find out why it happened. What happened that made it get out of control? Um, I, I think uh, we just got in kind of an argument over something. I can't remember what it was. What happened that made things get out of him? Something she said. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, can we be real here? Does she like comment on your sexual performance or no, something? No, no. It, was, was it, it was just, it was, yeah, it was. But it was. Does she want to leave and you didn't want to leave yet? Um, something like that. I, I, I don't, Daniel, I don't remember. I don't remember again. Well, yeah. we're trying to, we're trying to get to you to escape from I, I can't remember. I just thought but it was. But you're the one that was there. Right. You said yeah, we got kind of into a little bit of an argument or whatever. And from drinking and stuff, it just kind of got out of hand. You think I you took her down the road? In what? In my in my vehicle. Where'd you put her? Uh, just on the side of the road. Daniel was arrested and charged with first degree murder because prosecution believed that he had planned out his crime. Two weeks after his arrest, Daniel's body would be found in his jail cell. When Tanya's son found out what had happened to Daniel. He called him a coward for not waiting until his trial had started. Thank you for watching this video. I will see you next time here on the Red Tree Stories YouTube channel.